I was asked recently how I go about designing a, a vestment uh, that has multiple parts of embroidery that I know that those parts will fit together on the vestment when I'm finished. So that's what I'm going to do, uh, show you here. What I, what I have done is, and of course, I'm working a digitizer, which is, you know, is Hatch. Um, I got off the internet a picture of the back of a vestment. I also have the front of a vestment, but I'm going to show you with the back and it works the same for the front. So I got the, I brought the picture into uh, my digitizing program and I enlarged it to the size that I need. A t I'm, um, a t typically, the back of a vestment is about, I want to say 30, it's not 36, it's more like 30, uh 33 30 33 something like that so this is uh 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 22 23 24 25 26 27 27 inches 27 inches across and it is from the neck um It's 24, 25, 26, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. It's about, this is about 40 inches, but I think I said 27. Uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Yeah, by 27. Anyway, whatever pattern you have, you measure that pattern. And you you make, you enlarge this until it's that size. Uh, it does the background, you notice it, it can go even bigger than this. It's, it can go is about 60, 60 some inches, 40, about 80 inches this direction. And, uh, it can go 80 inches the other directions pretty much. So that's more than most things you would work on. So I large enlarge the picture. So it's that size. And then I proceeded to make, uh, using uh, Digitize, I digitized a, uh, a close shape, just going around the edges of this. It doesn't matter what color it is. Um, so it's the size that I want. Why? just because I don't want to see that background. I'm using, this is a, a, a template. I'm using this as a, something to copy from to make a template for a vestment. And it can be straight up here. I think I am going to, though this is a little slanted in and hit enter. And now it show, yeah, it, it shows black, but I can change it to any color I want. Um, I actually have this in gold, so I'm going to delete that one and just unhide. So I, I, I put this on top of it. There is not really that across the top. Now I can delete, at this point, I can delete the background picture. Um, what I'm going to do is simply hide it because I'm going to, I, I want, I'm going to keep it there. Uh, and this is the back of the vestment. This is the size that I need all of my motifs to fit on. And I keep, then I save this and I bring this in over and over and over again whenever I need to do that. So let me show you another one. Um, I've made a couple of these for different sizes. For example, um, I'm going to show that one. No, I don't need changes. Um, 
Here's another one. Now, this one is has actually has, you can't see it here because both of them are white. But if I click this one, that's the whole background. And this is the cross section. So this is the section that I would generally need to put all my motifs on. And I'll show you how that works. So for example, here's another one Use, I, using that same thing. Um, this is one that I brought different embroideries on. I had this, um, this is the picture that I needed for the center. These are motifs that I made uh, that for another vestment and I like them for this one. And so I did these and these designs. All of this I have re ready and I brought it in here. And then I needed to see how much did, of this part did I need to fill here. Again, this is a repeat of the top. But I had and I had pictures of two sections of vestment that I wanted to use that I liked. So I brought these pictures in. Um, and made them the size that that would fit in this area. And then I brought them into, um, I they're underneath everything so you won't see them. Once I had them the size that I wanted that would fit here, this is the same size as this one. But notice that they're not, I'm going to get the wrong thing here, of course. You can lock things down that they won't move, and that would have been smart for me to do that, but um, all right, so let me bring this over again out of the way. If you look at these, they're not the same size. They don't need to be. If you, um, let me come in a little closer to see what I'm talking about. So, um, let me come out here. See the, the trim on the sides of these? Notice it's much further apart than the trim on the sides of these. Um, I'm going to be working with these separately. The trim will be the same when I'm done, but this is the design was what was important to me. And I needed that design to fit in. All right, let's come out so we can see the whole thing. I needed that design to fit into this area right here. I ran two lines down here, digitized two long lines here and here and here to make the outline of that cross. That would be trim that I'm going to put on. Uh, I believe I used a blue velvet ribbon to make that. Um, this is a vestment I've already made, uh, but this is how I went about making it. This I wanted to be the, the, the right size. It fit in nicely just right here. But this one I needed to have smaller because if I made this as big as this one, it would have been way down below the bottom of the vestment. And this is what I, this is the part that I need. And this can be any size that I want. So I made it so that it would fit in that area. And then what I did was just simply take this piece, copy it, paste it. All right, let me copy it. Open up a new, uh, new design, um, come out a little bit on this and then paste this one. Now it'll paste it exactly where it was in the other, um, way down here, my hoop. So over here. So once I get this, then I'll just drag it into the hoop. And that's the side. And now I'll work on top of this. Um, I don't need any of this piece at the bottom. 
that's already digitized. I've used it several for other things. I just needed to do all of this part in here. And I did, I made that, that embroidery and now I just, um, I would, I would center this in the hoop. Makes it much easier to work with when it's centered. And, um, I made this embroidery and then once I had all the embroideries, then I went back again to this, the same design and, um, I no longer need these, but I would put the, I put the embroideries in here and they're actually in here. Let me get close enough. You can see it. Um, so these embroideries, these are the actual embroideries now. And now I, now I need to figure out how, how many hoops I'm going to need. And again, I would be working on this. Now, some of these things would be done separately. They wouldn't be done, um, So as I say, this, this trim is not going to be embroidered. This is just ribbon that will be put down. So I don't need to worry about this as far as the design is concerned. So, and I, this, this centerpiece also is done as a separate design. Each of these floor de lis is done as a separate, a separate piece. And, and this is done as a separate piece, this whole ribbon here, this whole ribbon here, this ribbon below the picture, and each of these end pieces. They're all done separately, and they were then were, were sewn down after the ribbon was put down. This was put on top of it. Um, this was sewn into the corners. Uh, and these were these were put down. So none of this was embroidered on the fabric, nor was it embroidered on a piece of fabric for, for this part here, but these needed to be. So I did cut uh, a column section. I really only needed this column section, but I did, if this was a different fabric, I, I would cut the whole thing. And then I did embroider this and this on that column section. Then it was would be put down onto the vestment back. The ribbons would be put down to cover the raw edge. This would be put down to cover this raw edge here. And it would, if it was a complete cross, again, all of those would be put down. And then I would sew down the floor to lease in the corner and this cross at the top and um, add these appliques. So that's, that's how I work. Um, again, sometimes all of these they think need to be done on, a, on a piece of fabric and I need to know how, how big that, cross is going to be. And I use this template to decide those kind of things. Uh, let me see if I can find another one to show you along the same lines. Um, this one, this one over here, notice this has a different type of cross because the center piece um, would not fit in a cross like this. So it needed this extended. So I have a template for that. That's, that's, that sort of thing. Um, let me come down here to one of the ones that I, uh, I think it's the grapes one. All right. So here is, here's the, here's the design. Let me open this up. And I made this. basically from bringing in each of the different sections 
and putting it on top of uh, this to see if it would fit. And then I, and then again, once I have, let's go back to Ma this Mac and one. Once I have this and I know how, how, what I need to embroider, then I come down here to multi-hooping and again, it's showing me I need, in order to cover everything up there, I need these hoops, all of these hoops. Now, again, this part at the top, all of these are separate pieces, so I don't really need to worry about these three hoops here. But I do need to worry about these two hoops here and this one at the bottom. So this will go into one hoop. This will go into a second hoop, this part here. And this will go into a third hoop. So it's going to take three hoops. And once I know that, I click all of these pieces and for example, I would click all of these pieces here, this section here, but I don't really want these. I'm going to put these in the next hoop. So I'm going to click all of this part here and I'll group those together and they probably are grouped. Pull them out, let's see. Is there anything there or is that just, sometimes it leaves things behind. All right, undo. Um, so they, I group them together and put them, uh, put everything I need in that hoop, in the hoop. And then I, I cut it out and paste it into another into another design hoop and once it's here I can move it up or down it doesn't have to be in exactly the same position uh, I, if I leave a little bit of room around it if I can do that so that I can jog it once it's in once, once it's in the machine and I have the fabric under it uh, so I hope I hope I'm making sense here so this is the advantage of having a template. And once you have the template, being able to use the multi-hooping to add hoops around your design and uh, I'll delete hoops if you don't need them. Uh, for example, I could delete this one and this one and this one because they're not needed for this particular design, this Mackin design. Um, but these three hoops are needed. Uh, notice this is showing black because this is actually, uh, if you were to look at this, let me take go out of multi-hooping and go back into, let's say digitize. Once you go back into the, uh, once you go out of multi-hooping, it goes, all the colors go back to normal. See this background here? This is actually, um, it's the section here, the, actually these two sections here, which were the same as this section here, the one that says blank. Again, you have this one and then you have this one. It thinks that those are um, embroidery pieces because they were done as it, with threads. So if I bring up the true view and you come in, you can see there are they the threads. Um, the threads are going different directions, so you can see the difference between the cross section and the the column sec um, and the background section. And again, I could probably click on this and turn it a different color and you would see it even better. So come out. 
but it thinks that those are that's it thinks those are embroidery. And in in multi hooping, when you come into multi hooping, let's go back to Mackin and go into the multi hooping. Anything that doesn't fit in the hoop shows up black. So this is not fitting in a hoop. This is not fitting in a hoop. This is not fitting in a hoop. This is not fitting a hoop. And because this part is part of this, uh, it won't fit in one hoop. And so it's, it's also showing black. But I don't really care because I don't plan to hoop any of that. That's, that's just there for me to work with or work on. What I want are the parts that are in green. And if they're in green, that means they're inside a hoop. Now down here at the very bottom, I'm gonna move this hoop down a little bit because I, I think I see something that's not part of that hoop. See, this was not showing, it was showing black because it wasn't inside the hoop. Now this particular piece, I don't really need to be inside the hoop because it's it's going to be separate pieces sewn on afterwards. The same with this one and this one in the top. This is the piece that needs to be in the hoop, but pulling it down doesn't hurt. Now I can see the whole des design. But that's how that's how I go about arranging all of these pieces. If this was if if when I put it in here and I looked at it and these were too long, that these were coming too far to the ends, I would simply decrease, make these smaller so they, they would fit. Whatever happens to be in these sections, whether it's a floral pattern or an angel or something, to, to get it to fit, you would simply decrease it, um, reshape it to make it fit into that area. And then once everything is the way it's supposed to be, everything fits together, then I go in and I look at, okay, so this is gonna be one hoop. And if these weren't separate pieces, if I needed to embroider all of this, I would um, click all the pieces that I want in that hoop, which would not include this middle, this middle piece, and um, group them and then cut them out and paste them into another hoop where where I would then, now that I have them the size that I want, that they will fit on the vestment, uh, then I, I arrange them in the hoop and uh, send it to the machine.